Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 23, Completing the Year. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. Welcome to the next and last Match Connections podcast for a short time. Um, we've got Joe Parker from HeartSparks with us again. And Joe, the reason why we're calling this the last one for the time being is, believe it or not, our Year 12 students will officially complete their studies before exams this Friday. And we're, we're talking about the last week of October, which is quite amazing if we think about the journey that we've come on. But with the finishing of something, Joe, is the realisation that in many ways the students are coming to the end of their school journey and with graduation and that taking a different form this year but happening by the end of November exams will be over and and year 12 students will be the class of and we'll quickly move on to the following year. We want to talk about that transition today. Um, if, If you remember back to your time and me a little bit longer As much as we were looking forward to the end of the school, our schooling time and everything that came with that, we were also a little bit concerned about what it was going to be like. The first question I'd ask you about navigating this period between the end of school and the start of something else next year, it's perfectly fine to be a little bit nervous, isn't it, about what's to come for all, all of our students finishing year 12 this year? Absolutely. Thanks for having me back. It's good to be here again. And it's okay to be nervous and or anything else. I remember that time in my life like it was yesterday, even though it definitely wasn't. And I remember first and foremost just being so excited just to finish and have the freedom of summer. The other thing that stands out for me, though, is that it felt like my entire school life had been building up to this huge crescendo, which was the end of year 12. And then after that, there was also this sense of almost nothingness in some ways because so much focus had been put on this almighty exam period and finishing only then to find myself on the other side of it and suddenly the whole world was opening up and I wasn't fully aware of what my options were let alone the direction that I was headed in all of the time and so as with any kind of uncertainty nervousness anxiety sadness, grief, happiness, anger, excitement, the whole works is okay right now and any combination of it too. So Joe, the uncertainty is going to be back to almost what it was when I was at school when you were getting offers to go to university in January, whereas they normally happen so much. The first question I'd ask is when the exams are over towards the end of November and then there's that month or so before the students are going to get their results and then get first round offers, what would be your suggestions about how to navigate that period where you're not aware of how you've gone, you don't have those offers, and it's going to be into early 2021 before you actually get some direction. How, how would you, you advise parents, I suppose, in terms of supporting their sons and daughters and also the students themselves to navigate that period of uncertainty? Mm. And I think it's important to recognise here that not all students will be even waiting for university offers either. There are so many different pathways that we take after school. University, of course, is one, but that period of transition, regardless of what our plans are for the next year, is really universal in some ways across the board. And that waiting period, I think, really highlights to us an opportunity to think about what we can and can't control. Because if you are sitting exams, when you walk out of the room after that final exam, your part there is done. (laughs) Your part's done and no amount of worrying, 
stressing and feeling confused is going to make those offers come in any quicker. So in that instance, first and foremost, it's a time to celebrate and know that you've put in the hard yards and you've done your bit. And now it really is about the waiting game. Outside of waiting though, which can raise our anxiety in and of itself, it's a good time to think about connection and celebration and also focusing on what you're excited to do for the next part of your life outside of academic commitment and study. This is a time to be thinking about what more you want to introduce into your life other than just a potential uni place or another offer. And knowing that it is really hard to put that out of our mind when we're sitting there anxiously awaiting a uni offer. And again, I remember that feeling like it was yesterday. It's a good time to, for parents, carers, anyone, to encourage you to get actively involved in other things things as most as, as best as we can right now this is the first time in a long time that you have the ability and have the time to invest in all of the hobbies friendships connections that you've wanted to without having to have study get in the way of that and so doing something that feels purposeful regardless of what it is is a good way to anchor ourselves back in while we're waiting one of the things i've noticed joe as students have returned is the comfort that people get around environment that is familiar and mm -hmm that sense that um, they've enjoyed coming back because suddenly there's a familiarity around who makes up this class of 2020. I might not know everybody, but I'm comfortable around all those people. And we know that once we get to the end of year 12, that those friendship groups and the people that we're connected with, it changes. And we have to navigate that, that path, I suppose, to those relationships and those connections that we want to maintain and that we want to keep. Is there any suggestion about how do you navigate that period of transition around friendships and social circles and the balance between the friends that I have and the friends that I'm going to get, whether it be in work or whether it be going to university or TAFE or, or having a gap year? How do you, how do you navigate that and, and try to that path where you keep the ones that are, are close to you and important to you while still reaching out to new environments and new opportunities that exist. And it's, it's such an important time for relationships because to a certain extent over the past few years, students have been forced almost to spend time not just with people that they really like, but also people that they don't. Like all of us are going to have relationships in our life that we don't actually want really to carry forward into the future. And so first and foremost, it's a time to think about how you want to feel in relationships and which friendships you do want to keep and to carry forward with you in your life. And then actively reaching out to those people, sharing celebration, sharing time together, but also using it as a time to explore what things, what you want things to look like next year in your friendships. And as well, when you're starting to move forward, regardless of what transition might be, in thinking about who you want to invite into your life or what new friendships might be out there for you, this is the time to get really serious about the kind of people that you want in your life. Because while you get to carry all of those amazing friendships with you, you also get to almost hit the reset button on new relationships too. Simple strategies for maintaining friendships are the ones that you've already been using over time of home learning and being away from school. Using technology, text messages, catching up, social, but social distancing in that where you can and actually putting your friendships and the ones that you care about on the agenda so that you're actively investing time and making effort rather than just allowing school to be this convenient place where you get to connect. The biggest shift here tends to be that you don't have something like school to ensure that you get to see each other and connect the way that you have in the past. And so this is the time to be taking control of that. Would it be fair to say, would it be fair to say that those friendships we keep will evolve naturally because instinctively we will want to stay in touch with those people and we'll instinctively want to stay connected. And those people that maybe move from friendship to acquaintances to people we meet in a wider social network and those that we want to spend time, that will evolve quite naturally. And you shouldn't necessarily be tied to those relationships that you've had in the school situation, outside of the school situation. Mm. 
It will evolve naturally for sure. And there's also an element of consciousness there. I think it can also be easy for us just to almost sit back on our laurels and expect that we don't need to participate actively in a relationship to stay connected to it. But over a time of transition, when we are feeling so many different things and there's a lot that's uncertain, reaching out to the people that you do want to stay connected to is really important. The natural organic part of this though is that not everyone's meant to be in our life forever and so you're right naturally some relationships will get deeper and others will start to drift away and fall away and the most important thing I think to remember is that that's not necessarily a bad thing at all it's just a natural part of life and for every relationship that organically drifts away from us there's going to be a new one that comes in too. And Joe, the final thing that I probably want you to address is that my sense is that school for parents to some degree and for students to some degree becomes a bit of a, a one-stop shop for support. The careers counsellor is just across the other building. The, the counsellors, um, you know where they are if you feel comfortable accessing them. The teachers you see every day, most students would have a teacher that they're familiar enough to be able to confide in and get support and they're seeing them every second day or they're just an email away. I think we know that as students trans, trans, transition out of school, that those one-stop shop, shop connections that they have may not exist in that form. For parents even, the ability to ring up a year level coordinator or a staff member to get a sense of how their son or daughter is, is, is tracking is been there and been a constant and, and that will change advice for the students and to parents to some degree about you know re, you know connecting with different information and different organizations and different support in an environment where it's maybe not as close to you as what you've been used to over such a long period of time mm, i'm so glad that you're raising this because you're right and even in the number of people day to day that ask us how we are or how we're going shifts significantly when we get out of school and we don't have teachers and wellbeing coordinators and counsellors checking in. The first thing I'd recommend is to get to know your local community regardless of where you end up living over this next year. Here in Wyndham we have the things like the Youth Resource Centre that's connected to local council here and they're very much in touch with all of the local organisations and services that are in this local area to support young people and families too through that transition. It's also a great time to compare networks and share resources with friends and with each other that you may have been accessing outside of school already, but that you know have been a great support to you that other people might use into the future. And Google's your best friend here. There is so much information that's available online, including a whole host of online services. And so being willing to research, to use your voice and to ask, for what you need, to reach out to community members that you may already have some familiarity or connection with. I'm always available at heartsparks.com.au and here to support referrals or conversations as well. But above all else, using just five, 10 seconds of courage to write a quick email, reach out to an organisation on chat or make a quick phone call and ask or get curious about what you need so that those services can open up to you. There are also lots of community days on around the local service system here in Wyndham but all across Melbourne and interstate as well and so anytime you find yourself in a new community a quick trip to local council or into a community centre or online will start to show you what organisations are available to connect within those networking evenings too. And I think Joe, from a point of view of I'm always happy to see students progress and you don't see them or hear from them as much as what you've been used to but it doesn't have to be cold turkey either. It can mm -hmm. be a situation where no you're way. part of the alumni and you can reconnect with school to get support if that's required as much as you're moving beyond school. And I think that's an important thing for parents and students to realise that you don't have to see yourself as not being a member of the school that you've been part of just because you finish officially at the end of six years of, of school. So, Joe, I think... From what I've said, what I've heard you say, we, we, we look upon the next part of our lives for these students moving from school into whatever thing that they want to do with 
a positivity, with a flexibility, with a with an openness to to learning new things, taking new things on, and being positive about it as much as they're leaving some things behind, the opportunities that exist are perhaps far greater than what they imagine. Mm, absolutely. And the thing is, at any point in time, we're only ever really choosing what's next. This isn't about making huge decisions that have to define and dictate what's going to happen for the rest of your life. You're just choosing what the next step is. Is. And even if the next step doesn't align with what you are hoping it might in the full form, you then get to change the decision that you make after that and the one that you make after that. And this is just a piece of what is going to continue to be a huge journey for everyone. And so regardless of what you choose next, if at any point in time it's not serving you, you can always relook at the drawing board, get some extra support and look to choose again. Well, Joe, we've done this now through the period of remote learning and I've appreciated your insight and I think and I hope that what we've done in these little podcasts is leave things and, and snippets of information and maybe little nuggets of gold for, for students this year and their parents this year and hopefully beyond to, um, to be able to use because no year is the same and this information, as much as we, it's come to light and our discussions have come to light through a difficult situation they're just as relevant for students going forward as what they have been this year so I really appreciate your time and your insight we know that we'll have an ongoing working relationship with you through Heart Sparks with different programs that we run across the school but this has been something else that we've tried this year and I really appreciate your time and, and thank you very much. Uh, it's been a joy to be here with you and to be a part of this conversation and an even though I haven't had the opportunity to see students in the way that you have, it's also been nice to hold them in my thoughts as we've been going through what has been such a big time of transition for everyone. So thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Joe. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and look after yourself.